Hello everyone, so welcome to the second virtual field trip. So in the first virtual field trip, we, um, st we took a look at the uh, Catfish Creek Till, which is the unit in the Waterloo region that is associated to a time of extensive ice. It includes the last glacial maximum. And so we took a look at that as well as uh, some of the features, uh, but this was the focus of the first field trip. Today we're going to start looking into um, the deposits and features associated to the deglaciation. So the time when ice started to shrink, retreat, the ice margin started to form big lobes in the Waterloo area or southern Ontario. Um, that was the Lake Huron lobe and the Lake Ontario area lobe, and so they deposit they deposited uh, their own um, sediments, and then in the middle, the Waterloo area, there was a lot of glacial fluvial deposition, a lot of glacial lake deposition, um, and uh, it formed, among other things, it formed this big positive feature that we call the Waterloo Moraine. So. So in this second virtual video, we'll start taking a look at that. We'll take a look at the water, the moraine, um, landforms and sediments, and then we'll take a look at some of the deposits on the western flank that are associated to the Lake uh, Huron Lobe. Um, and, uh, and then we'll discuss the, uh, the retreat phase uh, pattern that uh, happened in this area. But before we go in the field, let's take a brief look at the surface shoal, the regional surface shoal geology map of southern Ontario, um, because the the geometry of the margins here, not not their timing. This this is based on dating of samples, but the geometry of the margins is heavily constrained by by surface shoal maps like uh, like this one. So you see moraines, you see evidence of frontal ice margin. Uh, frontal positions, so this is constrained by certain landforms and deposits, so you see some of these things. Um, and the collars, if you're not familiar with this in North America and in Canada, certainly um, uh, there are standard collars for surficial units. So, so in green, we have till sheets. Now, there are different greens because there are different textures on this map, but they are um, related to the stratigraphic units that, that you have on, on the cross section. So you've got uh, uh, mostly the, the tills that, that overlie the Catfish Creek till that are associated to the retreat and re-advances of these lobes. The Lake Ontario lobe deposited some of these till, she till sheets over here, and then the Lake Huron deposited some of the till sheets over there. And as you can see, it didn't retreat in one go. You've got stacked till sheets that may, that are in some places interstratified with glacial lake sediments and glacial fluvial sediments. So today we'll take a quick look at that um, and we'll focus on the Waterloo moraine. So we'll go in this area, take a look at some of the landforms and deposits of the Waterloo moraine. So in orange, you've got glacial fluvial deposits. So we'll take a look at that um, and then we'll continue our way to um, the Conestoga Lake. So we'll all be on the western side of the Waterloo Moraine. So we'll take a look at the Conestoga uh, Lake area we'll, we, where we can see deposits, younger the glacial deposits that overlie the Catfish Creek till. So we'll take a look at glacial lake sediments and other um, till sheets like the Mornington and Tavistock tills. All right, see you in the field.